First up is the aggregate head machining. Um, in the image, you, uh, the illustration you see here, it's just a short segment of, of a long channel. Now, typically the aggregate heads are used for cutting right, right angle cuts uh, on a, uh, a milling table. If you can imagine a, uh, a millwork uh, door sitting on your table and you're wanting to cut, say the, the hinge pockets or the lock pockets, uh, you can put the aggregate head on, and you can come in and attack that from the side and mill those out uh, very easily. So it it uh, it utilizes uh, indexed setups. Uh, it's just a standard index machining, and uh, Joe is going to go over that. Also, when I forgot to mention, uh, my name is Don LaCourse. I'm a senior application engineer for Mixsoft. And I'm joined today with Joe Anon. Joe is Mixsoft's product manager. And uh, Joe is actually going to be doing the demo portion, and I'm doing the uh, presentation portion. OK, so aggregate head machining supports uh, all two and a half axis, three axis, and index four axis machining operations. So basically, you're doing an index uh, setup to machine um, uh, two, three, or four axis operations in that locked orientation. And uh, it also supports uh, all tool types. So it's very versatile. Uh, if you've got an aggregate head, um, you can uh, pay attention and look at this uh, demonstration here that's coming up. Uh, thank you, Don. Uh, welcome, everybody. Uh, so let's get started uh, without any further ado. So I'm going to start with the aggregate head example first. Uh, uh, quick note. Uh, most of the topics that we're going to be discussing here uses uh, our pro configuration, uh, or at least the three plus two configurations, uh, where you will need the uh, additional setups. Uh, st standard, if you're using the standard configuration, um, you you will have to upgrade to add the multiple setup uh, configuration, because these are advanced topics, and so uh, uh, these require these advanced uh, functionality. Uh, as you can see, this part, it's actually a fabricated part. It's a metal part. Uh, customer actually sent it and we uh, modified it slightly so to remove all IP information from it. And as you can see, this is, uh, this is a fabricated metal part. It's probably pretty heavy. It's sitting on the table. And so to machine this, you really don't want to rot be rotating the table. Uh, so you want to actually uh, use, um, typically use an aggregate head. And if you're lucky enough to have a five axis machine, uh, you can obviously use the five axis machine as well. Uh, but so what we are going to be showing here, what I'm going to be showing here is the three axis. Let's say you had a three axis machine, pretty dumb machine. I'm, I'm using the word uh, not as a prerogative, but a uh, pejorative, but uh, more as a, a functionality that is it, that it, it cannot do rotations. Uh, it can only do uh, three axis motions. Uh, in that case, you can still use our system um, and use the power of our, our you know, programming system to create machining toolpaths using aggregate heads. And I'll show you how to do that. Uh, first of all, let me show you, go through the toolpaths quickly, and then I'll actually show you how to program these in this part. So what we have here, uh, the first thing we do is we have to define it as a machine tool, a five axis machine tool. The first uh, thing that you wanna do uh, in, in case of an aggregate head. Uh, if you're using an aggregate head on a three axis, in the CAM system, you still have to define the machine as a five axis. And we would recommend using the five axis head to head head, head uh, configuration. So the way this way we are actually rotating the head and not the table uh, because most parts typically either in a router application where you have a large um, door or some uh, part like that, you really don't want to rotate the table. You want to rotate the head. And in this case, it's an aggregate head and you are rotating the table in, in fact. And so we set it up as a head, head head. And the reason we do a five axis is you can rotate the aggregate head in, in different orientations. Um, maybe uh, in some app, actually in this application, you really don't need a five axis. You can do a four axis rotation because we're only machining uh, three sides here, so you can get away with four axis. Uh, but just to be general, we've defined it as a five axis head to head, I mean, head to head configuration. And then I'll talk about the post processor in a bit. Uh, this is a special post processor we wrote for the aggregate head. And uh, I'll talk about that in a minute. And then um, 
the way we machine this is we're machine, we're creating a standard setup. Uh, if you, I'll turn on the coordinate systems, and these are the coordinate system, the standard coordinate system, the Z axis is the blue arrow that's pointing up. And then the toolpath, we're cutting that, we're actually cutting that out, so it basically will fall off that piece. It's a profile operation. And then the next thing we do is we rotate. As you can see, we this is the Z axis, is now normal to this face, and then we are machining that circular hole there. Again, a, a profiling operation. And then finally, we're doing a rotation back by, by a minus 90, where you can see the z-axis is pointing this way, and then we're machining that slot. And then so once we created the toolpaths, um, we, we use this post-processor, or uh, we could write something specific for your machine, not necessarily this post, uh, so if I go and do a post all, I'll show you the posted code in a minute. Uh, so as you can see here, you see the angle, uh, the standard setup, the angle we've set up as a B angle to come out as zero. So the reason it's coming out as a comment is uh, we're assuming you have a three axis machine that's not capable of rotating. So at this point, um, you are there. We put an up stop there with the M00. Actually, you pass to rotate the aggregate head manually. Once you do that, and then you can machine the top, and then the top slot is machined, and then do a rotation 90. Uh, that's where we are again pausing to rotate the aggregate head by 90 degrees. Uh, so since it's manual, you got to be careful about uh, the kind of rotations you're doing, which direction you're rotating. And then finally, the third third operation where you're rotating 270 or minus 90, depending on the type of machine that you have. So those are equivalent. So let me quickly go through uh, how we program it, you know, just, just as an illustration. I'll go ahead and delete all these operations. Uh, so uh, we, for those of you who don't know how to set up the machine, we're basically doing a manual definition, five axis, head, head, head. And then we are doing a standard uh, x-axis as the, uh, the, the fifth axis. Uh, the primary axis is about the z-axis, which is pretty uh, typical. And then let's say we create a stock. Oh, it's actually, we created a stock from selection. So basically this is a pro feature where we selected this solid model and that's our stock model. And then let's, let's do a standard setup. So we create a standard setup, normal setup, I'll say generate. And that would be, if you look at the orientation of the z-axis, the blue arrow, it's pointing up. And so we can machine that part. So I'm gonna rename that. I'll call it the standard setup. So as I'm doing this, if you have any questions, yeah, go ahead and type it in the chat window and Don can either stop me or he can answer uh, by typing in the, the answers in the questions window. So let's keep it as interactive as possible. Okay, so now I want to machine this. I just want to do a profile operation. So all I'm going to do is go up to two axis, and do a two axis profiling, uh, select my edge curves. I can do that. So that's what I'm going to be machining. I'm going to use a flat end mill, a half inch. This is some, these are the tools that I've already defined my tool library. I'm gonna leave my feeds and speeds standard uh, loaded loaded uh, from uh, a knowledge base. Uh, clearance plane, as you can see, it's oriented correctly, the clearance plane. I'm gonna leave it as automatic. And then cut level, is just this important one. If I just do one cut level, if I don't do anything, it's just gonna give me one cut. Uh, so in order for me to go down and cut this, I need to do multiple cuts. So I'm going to go back to my cut levels and I can use this total cut depth. I can actually specify by selecting that and this 0.375 and I can split this up into maybe, uh, you know, 0.15 cuts and that's the kind of cuts I'm getting. Okay, that looks good. So I can simulate it at this point. Uh, I'll turn off the part model, it's fighting for display, so. Okay, so I probably want, don't want to come in that way. I can probably come in 
as you can see, I don't want to plunge into metal like that. So the, that's the nice thing about our simulation engine. So you can go to entry, exit, I can do a long path, uh, do a ramp and do the same thing. Actually on the exit, like I'm okay. So I'm actually not plunging into material. So there I'm ramping in. And at the end, I'm coming out and I don't really care about that because I'm cut. Okay, so now let's try. Now, this is the, the crux of the whole thing is how do we how do we machine this side? So in order for, order for us to do that, we create another setup. So we go in there and create a setup. And the way we, uh, we want to orient the, the blue Z axis to be normal to this face. So many ways of doing this, but the simplest uh, way in this case is I'm just gonna rotate about the Y axis by 90 degrees. If I do that, you'll see the, uh, the blue arrow is now pointing that direction. So I'm gonna generate. And so I'm gonna rename that setup. Rotated by 90, I'm gonna call it that. And in fact, uh, instead of going back and um, I can just copy paste this operation, control C, I'm doing a control C and then I'm moving it down here and pasting it. And then all I need to do, and I, and I know the thickness is pretty much the same everywhere. So I don't need to change any of the parameters of the feeds and speeds. So all I need to do is change, re change the control geometry in this case. So I'm gonna go remove all and then select curves and edges. I'm gonna select that and order to curves. I'm gonna generate. So there you go. So it's the same parameters, same cutting parameters, and I can simulate that. So I got these two sides machined. Okay, now let's go ahead and machine the other side. So now if you notice the uh, Z axis is pointing this way. So we want to orient it, maybe rotate that by Y axis by 180 degrees. So let me create another setup. And I'm going to rotate that twice by, so I'm rotating it this way. Now I'm, and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to rename that rotated by 270. Uh, rename. Uh, 270 or minus 90, either one is the same. Um, and I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna copy this operation and then go in here and paste it. And then change the control geometry again. So remove all. I'm just gonna go select. Okay, so it could not find the valid data because it's the cutter could not get in. Uh, the slot is too small. So let's try a one eighth inch. There you go. So now I can cut that, either that or I can do a slot machining, uh, depending on what you want to do. And I can simulate that. Okay, so let me go back and read, select my operation. This is, I'm gonna go stock, stock from selection. This is a, oh. Joe, I believe yeah. there's a, there might be a layer in that file that has the- uh, The stock? Yeah, it has a stock defined. Okay, let's go back and Maybe that one. Could be that, I think. Yeah. Okay. Okay, stock from selection. Oh, I gotta select the stock model first. Yeah, poly surface. Then a stock from selection. Okay, now I can hide that stock model. I think that was this one. I believe it was layer one, I think. Layer one. Okay, all right. Thank you. 
Okay, let me, so that's stock from selection. So basically what we did was we created, uh, we selected a poly surface. It has to be a solid model. And that's what uh, starting stock is. And obviously this does not have any of the, uh, the features machined yet. So we're gonna do the. And then we're gonna do the simulation of the next one. Okay, and then finally, Okay, so that's pretty much it. Uh, that's how you do an indexed machining operation or multiple machining operations. And the key to this is when we output this, let's do a post all. I think we did that already. So the rotations uh, are set up as mentioned previously. So the angles coming out here and then the B90. And then finally, we got the 270. Uh, we're getting the angle 270. These are coming out as comments. So we are assuming that uh, you're gonna be doing a manual rotation of the head, which direction you're, you're gonna be rotating. And, and the, the we do the transformations internally. So the, the tool positions are coming out in world coordinate system, which means your three axis machine uh, can handle it and machine it correctly uh, based on our transformations that we output in the post processor. Uh, one of the key things you will have to specify though is the gauge length. If your machine tool does not handle rotated coordinate systems like a TCP, um, then you will have to specify the gauge length and uh, in the machine, there's this gauge length we'll have to uh, specify, which is basically uh, there's the distance between the pivot and um, pivot point and the two and the call at end. And this is important because we need to, actually this is, you can read about this in our help file and how we use this to make the transformations uh, so that the toolpath coordinates will come out when you're doing a rotated coordinate system programming, but machining it on a, a simple three axis machine. So uh, that's an important uh, a concept that you need to understand. Joe, we had a, a, a question. Um, uh, how to zero out the rotated head? How to zero the machine out with a with an aggregate head? It, uh, um, yeah, the typical typically people would zero it out at the table. Uh, you can do it at the table or at the at the top of that. Uh, In other words, top with, of the stock. with the aggregate head installed. Uh -huh. Zeroing it out. In other words, oh, setting the angle of the head, and then they're zeroing out. Yeah. So what you'd have to do is uh, have the aggregate head without any rot rotations. So it's pointing down. The tool is pointing down, and then you're going to zero it out that way. Okay. Okay. And then once you zero it uh, that way, and then you specify the gauge length in the machine tool, then we will do the uh, transformations using that uh, gauge length. And there was uh, another question. Um, asking about how to program the sharp corners in the pockets. Um, that's one thing you can't do necessarily in CNC is to actually create a sharp corner with an end mill. Um, so I'm just asking you, Joe, the best way to handle that would just be what, with a, a smaller uh, end mill yeah, and just for the corner? Yeah, obviously because of the radius of the end mill, if you're just going to machine it, you're going to leave that corner. Uh, so the best way, I mean, in metal machining, if you want really sharp corners, uh, people, people use electrodes. Uh, they machine the electrodes, mm -hmm. uh, the male portion of the electrode, and actually sink the electrode in. Yeah, uh, that's burn, it, burn it right out. Right. Uh, if it's wood, uh, you know, obviously it's the, you're not going to be using that method. So there's uh, you'll have to use a smaller tool and come in maybe with a remachining operation with small tools and come in and clean it out as much as possible. Uh, that's pretty much it. I mean, we really can't get to those sharp corners in uh, in CNC because of the radius, of, uh, the physics of the uh, rea reality, physics of reality doesn't help us there. So well, that's what EDM machining is for. Right, yeah. Okay, so we're, we need to be stepping it up a little bit. So yep. let me go on to the next, which is the, 